Assalamu alaikum, dear viewers. Peace be upon you all. Welcome to our show discussing the different aspects that we can learn from the day of Ashura. Today's topic is of the vital institution of marriage in Islam. It's amongst human nature to want to have a partner and to procreate and to spend their life sharing it with another person. And Islam emphasizes this very much so, as with other teachings. On the day of Ashura, there were several deaths taking place. One of the things we sometimes neglect is that the topic of marriage was brought up in Ashura. To discuss this topic, we're going to have our esteemed guest, Sheikh Ali Marsh. We've got Sayyid Mohsin Shah. We've got Imran Datu and Brother Tahir Adil. Sheikh, before we get into how uh, marriage was maybe uh, shown in Ashura through the, through the figure of perhaps Qasim ibn al-Hassan, um, why does Islam emphasize getting married versus having a monastic life or being a monk um, where one can dedicate themselves to God you know, purely through uh, an individual way. Why with another person? A'udhu billah as-sami'al alim min ash-shaytan ar-rajim bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihu al-tayyibin al-tahirin Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa alihu al-muhammadin In one of the narrations about marriage we have that um, it states that one of the best establishments in Islam is the establishment of marriage. One of the best in which the Islam has, uh, uh, since it was established in Medina 14th century ago, that when the Holy Prophet came to Medina, um, he tried to overcome the issue of, of being single and <coughs> Uh, those who, for example, didn't have any means of financial support, who, in other words, they were poor, he would offer them uh, marriage. And of course, the narration, the prophetic narration states that uh, The one who gets married, he has achieved, attained half of his religion, half of his belief. Then let him or her protect herself or himself on the uh, second half of, of his religion, which is uh, in terms of aqidah and, and so forth. So you can see how important marriage is that the Islam calls it half of the religion. And today in the world, in this day and age, we see that the crimes, you know, the um, uh, atrocities, for example, um, those who commit these crimes, just recently in the US, the shootings, um, killing innocent people in, in their shopping malls and markets and schools and so forth, it was done by uh, young men under the age of 25 and they were singles, seems to be the majority. So marriage uh, offers protection, immunity from the mischief and wrongdoings in all aspects of life, be it adultery, be it crime, be it uh, financial, for example, fraud, and so forth. It provides that immunity that individual would not even think about doing something wrong, unless there's exceptions for some who would, for example, uh, go to the wrong uh, path. But in overall, it brings full protection for the individual. In another hadith from Imam Sadiq that encourages marriage, he says that two rak'ah, a married person prays is greater than 70 rak'ah, a single praise. So imagine the one who prays while he's married gets more reward than a, a single person who has no wife or vice versa husband. Uh, by praying 70, those two rak'ah for married would be more than 70 rak'ah of the non-married. So this is the greatness of Islam that protects the individual as a whole, not just as a uh, single person, but as a family. Thank you. Um, Sayyid Mohsin, we were discussing uh, earlier off the camera the idea of um, Qasim ibn al-Hassan. Um, and as I mentioned in the intro, when we look at Ashura, there are several things, obviously, many deaths took place. Mm -hmm. And the topic of marriage, you don't think ever comes up in this story because we yes. focus on the way um, the people died and the brotherhood shown and, and so on and so forth. And there's been, I've never knew 
Qasim was possibly married or going to get married. Mm -hmm. um, have you did you have you ever heard of this? And did you ever come across any uh, such uh, such? Yes, a, I mean, um, when I was growing up, um, we were under the impression that uh, well, I was under the impression that as Qasim didn't get married. However, recently, a couple of years ago, uh, I've had the discussions and I mean, the discussion circles, and there is some evidence to say that no, he was married. Personally, I don't think it's important to me. I don't think it's important whether he was married or not married. Mm -hmm. What is important is that his mother wanted him married, and his mother was insistent that he should be married, uh, you know, b before he goes for battle. Um, so there is some sort of importance put on, you know, marriage mm -hmm. and importance on a man's status when he is married, and, and for a man, if, if he is to <coughs> die, to die a married man. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it was some may argue it was just his mother's dream. That he'd be married and he was of the age but we know also mm. he was very young he was mm. you, know, uh, you know he didn't even have a full beard mm. uh, probably what 13 14 maybe uh, so he also shows that at what age one should be getting married and i think there's a lot of islamic values in our shura marriage is one of them and also the other one is also salah that war was stopped for salah as yeah. well yeah. so there's, there's many many you know uh, practices and and many many ideas and we could take from our shura mm. definitely as a as Qasim, as you mentioned, was 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 a youth, and when we are at this age of thirteen slash fourteen, we always look towards the future. We look towards what is our family life going to be like when I get married, when I have kids, and so on and so forth. God grants me all these blessings, but Qasim seemed to abandon that. He said that famous phrase that death is sweeter than honey in in, in the way of Imam. Um, how does Qasim show, um, Brother Tahir and Brother Imran, how does Qasim show the idea of putting desires to one side and obeying your Imam is, is, is above my desires? I think that specific age, and as, as boys and uh, teenagers, we went through that phase of being distracted by the world uh and not really focusing on your deen your faith your piety and, and whatnot uh so when you have that example of qasim and the way he prioritized not even his religion death on uh, death itself mm -hmm. on top of his desire not even desire as in the worldly uh distractions it gives examples to the youth mm -hmm. and not just youth but adults as and well then, and that age when i think of it mm -hmm. i know person that age thinks of death yeah. They think of prolonging their life as much as possible and as, uh, having the aspirations. Yet he says that. W what about you, Brother Imam? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, just uh, mirroring what uh, Brother Tahir said, that it just shows the yeah, the taqwa he had, the yaqeen he has, um, uh, Hazrat Qasim has in his faith that, um, you know, whatever the Imam said at the time, whatever it said, that is the do all and end all. Uh, you know, so you just kind of ignore everything that you need. And you know, it's a lot easier said than done. We're saying it now like so easily, like, yeah, Shah Qasim, Hazrat Qasim just put his desires to yeah. one side, put the worldly affairs to one side, and he went to die. But it's, you know, like, you know, we hear a lot of, even in the, the, the Maulanas and the lecturers, they say, what if we were there in Karbala? Yeah. What would, genuinely, what would we do? It's a hard one. It's extremely it's difficult, answer. extremely difficult to then say, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I'll just go to die. It's not like that. You need to have a certain level of, Taqwa, a certain level of yaqeen in your faith, in your religion, in your Lord, to know that you know this is what will satisfy you. Mm -hmm. This is what will satisfy your soul. So, and that that's what uh, Hazrat Qasim mm -hmm. uh, displays, and it, it's it's um, very admirable mm -hmm. to actually. That, that question, sorry. No, it's not just that; it's the maturity element to it. Absolutely, Normally, yeah. when yeah. Uh, growing up, our fathers would be like, you know, let him play. He's only thirteen, fourteen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let him enjoy his life. Exactly. Uh, but that point, he was thinking of things far greater than mm. it. Uh, things that were eternal. When does a child even look at yeah. uh, something that's bigger than himself mm -hmm. at that age? It's uh, beyond imagination. Yeah. So strive for that maturity. Yeah, I think the the point you made about asking ourselves the question, "Would I be there?" It's actually a very uncomfortable question. Mm. Um, it actually makes you humble yourself, and it's quite a scary question if you ask yourself. Because truly, truly, it's very easy to say in retrospect what would you, exactly. what would you do back then. Um, Sheikh, I want to um, just uh, uh, extract a point that you said. That you said that um, perhaps getting married safeguards you from other evils, not just um, illegitimate acts regarding marriage, but stuff around that. Why does Islam say that doing an act of worship is better when you're sharing it with another person versus the single person because surely if I'm, I'm just putting it out there surely if I'm single I can concentrate more on my relationship with God if I add another person to the to the equation 
if I can say that, surely that makes it even more difficult? Or why does Islam oppose this? You see, the life of the singles, I'm sure you've uh, went through this situation in your youth, teenage, and, and so forth onwards. It's a bit awkward. Uh, it's an unstable st stage of life. You know, there are a, a lot of temptations, lust, a lot of attractions around, especially with today's m social media, um, uh, satellites, TV, and so forth, that um, promotes indecency, promotes um, images and films and so forth. So if that youth or that individual single man or, or woman would be exposed to, to these uh, indecencies now, they would have now, you know, the consequence would be very, uh, I mean, grave. So uh, with regard to the marriage, it protects immune from the first day. So th that teenager or that youth, that uh, man or woman won't think about anything else except to build their life and to keep it going on. So they, w they won't be looking at the, uh, let's say, images or videos and so forth, um, just to um, quench their desires. So that's why you see that encouragement is for the marriage. And even the Prophet he said, النكاح سنتي the nikah, the marriage is my sunnah, and the one who uh, neglects or rejects it, then he's not part of me. Falaysa mm. minni, he's not part of my nation. So imagine how emphasizing on the marriage, just avoid uh, the, the fact of uh, um, corruption and deviation within the moral aspect. Mm. Thank you. Um, we'll talk more about this um, in, in the next part, but um, as per the uh, format of the show, we are going to uh, break for a bit of poetry regarding this phenomenal figure, although a youth, a phenomenal huge figure of Qasim ibn al-Hassan um, by Brother Tahir. So this poem uh, about Qasim uh, is quite different. It follows him, it's like a timeline following him throughout the day uh, of Ashura and up until his martyrdom. So it starts with him uh, being faced with a letter uh, written by his father goes ink forming letters and words forming tears that once unfolded from under the fingertips of my father i need not read the words to understand for i have understood enough through the eyes of hussein beneath these hidden stars i declare my uncle and master to me and what is death to me but sweeter than honey warmer than the embrace of sunlight and the testimony of the beauty of the night my death is molded on the waves of sacrifice Sacrifice my life young, but an endless sea in its message. So when Qasim approaches his uncle, he says, I heard a tremor in his voice and felt a shiver in his embrace. My uncle's sorrowful words have flooded my heart's shore. His eyes as heavy as clouds today waiting to spill away. He welcomed me back into his arm. Then I remembered your warmth. But what embrace would bury my wounds later but the swords? Timeless counted visions saw about in my mind. Images painted pictures of my legacy perfectly. But none could picture leaving my mother behind. What greater parting gift I could extend to her broken heart than the gift of youthful sacrifice. This next passage is about his martyrdom. The far horizon of paradise stretches and merges with the redness. The angels flock and compete to call me by my father's name. I pr in pride I march forth with armor once adorned by him. I'm now ready to fill the many corners of his bleeding heart. Today Hussein's name will not only be the only one sung by the angels. Hassan al-Mujtaba will be sung through me and my wounds. This honor that I have been seeking lies in the heart of death. I shall earn it despite my fragile frame and young age. I am a student of Hussein in the art of martyrdom, painting an eternal message with an endless sea of love. The tide of death comes waning before my eyes as the moon of Karbala brings you to me tonight. I lay underneath the sky, returning the letter to your father, written with love and sent with the swords and spears, for who am I to sleep eternally like this? 
for I am the son of the fourth of five purified forms, ready to lay my life for the stand of the fifth. I am the son of the purified, ready to sacrifice myself for the pure. Death, why do you kneel, kneel down before me gracefully? Death, why do you kneel down before me gracefully? For do I remind you of my father, or does my father remind you of me? Yeah. Thank you. Very, very powerful. Thank you. Moving the discussion forward, I think the obviously the big, I would say, elephant in the room that's always said um, in the Muslim community is getting married young. Um, we, we are told it on the pulpit. We are told it by our families sometimes. And obviously the word young is relative to, te you know, to time, to age, to, to different communities and cultures. Um, but I want to ask uh, Sayyid Mohsin and, and the other members of of the panel, um, why, why is it nowadays? May, do I have to get married young? Um, surely times have changed. Life is busier, um, and for many people, it's hard now to find a spouse because life is very, very busy. Um, why is it? Uh, why does Islam emphasize mar a young marriage when perhaps it's harder today? Um, I think someone is looking towards us. <laughs> right, so we'll take this one. Ask, um, ask the married men. Um, no, so I think. Um, like you said, the time uh, is a big factor. So you know, you see in history with um, you know Hazrat Qasim, like we said, was so young, but that was at that time it was the norm. Um, you know, fast forward to 2019, uh, we find that yeah, people do ask that question: Do I need to get married young? Um, but th th there are so many factors that they now have to consider. For example, um, you know, the expenses in life. You know, you want to have a house, you want to have a stable job to look after your spouse, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you have to take that into consideration. You have to take, um, and like you said, even spouse selection now becomes so tricky because everything's so online and everything, you know, even, um, you know, there's Shia matches, Shia match websites as well, if I'm not mistaken. So everything's gone so online that, uh, and, it's, and it's following the trend of society. That's what we're yeah. doing. So I think um, even though our traditional methods are good, like, you know, like recommending uh, family, ma people know each other, they said these two would be good together, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. But following the trend, every, you know, that kind of, method is being, you know, it, it, it goes to say, oh, it's too awkward, you know, we, don't, we can maybe avoid this kind of method, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, that trend is being followed as well, uh, which potentially, um, you know, delays that marriage when necessarily it shouldn't, you should kind of embrace it. Like you said, it's a sunnah of Rasul. And it's, it, marriage has a very high status. Sometimes I think now that, again, through society, we lower the rank of marriage that, oh, you know, even um, the engagement period, like in some cultures, yeah. like with us, we have that period of engagement, and sometimes that lasts for a couple of years, and it's like, you know, get it done, just get yeah. married, to avoid uh, committing too much sin, etc. And I think one, one thing I noticed as well, we, we were, f were focusing a lot on how it pr marriage protects um, us from committing sin, which absolutely it does, but we also have to know that um, together, one of the main aims of marriage is to get closer to Allah. That is something you also have to achieve. Um, uh, one of the aims of marriage is to kind of find a spouse who will get you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, get that taqwa stronger, whether it's through uh, different a'mal, for example. I mean, in my own example, I had like a weakness. Um, and you know, alhamdulillah, my spouse, is, she helped me with this too. You know, it's something small, but it does help. It does help in your faith. Um, so it, it's, it's important to know that, um, you know, it, it, even though it protects you from the sins, it, it does also help you get closer to God. And getting married young, is when you and, and in the young age you do tend to commit the most sin, mm. so it's um, it's and, and you know now also nowadays actually you see a lot of people with society not being too attached to any religion. We go to colleagues and stuff. You know a lot of people are atheists now. They're like, what's God? Mm. So you know to kind of get you back on that track to strengthen your iman, it's another a good mm. reason to get mm. married young. But yeah, there are a lot of factors that are. Uh, in 2019 now mm. where the uh, reasons why marriage yeah. is delayed. I mean, I mean, Tahir, looking at the we, age is one thing, yeah. what's the importance of being ready though and readiness? You, could, you can't really be ready for marriage at any point. So I got married really young, uh, was never really ready. I, I'm probably arguably not ready now. Uh, but I could see the argument of should you get married at a young age or should you wait until you're more stable, financially stable, more mature? Uh, and then get married uh, or until you find the right person. So sometimes it's not about maturity, it's about finding that person that's compatible mm -hmm. with you. Uh, so I, I'm from the school of thought of get married if you find that right person, even if it's a struggle financially, still get married. 
Um, I know it's uh, it's a hard point to engulf for some people, as in, you know, how can you get married when you're so young? But, you know, we've got examples out there through scripture and a Quran verses where, you know, if you do have the right intentions, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does help you. Yeah. Uh, so being ready, I think that's a subjective uh, element here because you're not really ready. And I'm going to tiptoe just in case my wife is watching <laughs> back at home. Mm. Uh, but you've also got the mental health aspect. So yeah, like uh, chef, uh, the chef mentioned, safeguarding is one thing, safeguarding from the obvious. Uh, but marriage also safeguards you from a lot of mental health issues, mm. and, and that's a, uh, that's been you know bantered around a lot now. Uh, so you know, having that peace and tranquility at home, having another person to you know relay problems, relay opinions. Do you think that if you get married a little later, yeah, you kind of miss out on the adventure? And it's the growth, yeah. And yeah. So yeah. I've I don't I've got anecdotal experience of growing up with my spouse because we're both relatively young, uh, and that's kind of strengthened our bond. But you also have, you know, on the on the flip side of the coin is. Uh, you marry somebody that's compatible with you that's already you know set up and mature enough then mm-hmm. yeah so the argument works both ways yeah. but yeah that element of growing up the adventure of growing up is certainly mm. something that it's very relative yeah it's very important. relative and I suppose it is finding the right it's not like shopping you <laughs> have to find the right person it's yeah. not a mistake you want to make um, before you wrap up the show with the eulogy Sheikh I want you to just uh, go back to Karbala because I mentioned at the start of the show um, and in the Indo-Pak community we are when we hear the, the, the maktal of, of Ashura, we are told there was a desire for Qasim to get married from his mother, but not that she was actually married. But then there are some um, historical reports of him perhaps marrying uh, Sukaina just before the marriage. Can you shed light upon this uh, the historical aspect of Ashura? Yes, basically there is a difference in opinions of the ulama with regard to the, this event p- uh, particularly, that did the marriage took place or no. Um, some ulama would uh, mention in their books, such as Alama uh, Darbandi, he mentions that such uh, event took place, and it was just the aqid contract, the marriage nikah contract. It wasn't wedding and ceremony, ceremony and, and so forth. It's just the contract. And by itself, in, in Sharia, it's mustahab to have this contract to be done between uh, a boy and a girl, even if they're young. It's mustahab. And, uh, of course, those who uh, reject, basically, because of uh, you know the uh, the actual, uh, some might argue that, for example, uh, you know he was too young. How could you have a, a marriage contract, and especially in in war zone, for example? But Ashura is exception, and anything took place in Ashura was exceptional, mm. and even this marriage contract that took place was exceptional. Mm-hmm. It was a message to our youth that get married early. Uh, don't neglect the issue of marriage. Otherwise, uh, we see today in our society, I don't want to speak about it. I'm sure you yeah. know you've seen things happen, and especially the issue of, um, of divorce, which has a background before marriage. You know, uh, relationships between the, the immoral, I mean, in terms of immoral relation with, by the Facebook or Twitter and so forth, mm. with social media. That's why it ends up the, uh, divorce. Um, but anyhow, um, we have ulama who uh, accept the issue of, uh, or the, um, the story of the, uh, the marriage. And of course, um, as I've mentioned, the message from Ashura or from Al-Qasim al-Hassan alayhi salam I think I've mentioned two uh, uh, messages from him. Salam Allah Ali. That number one, bravery. That I mean, he was 13 and he fought uh, like a brave man uh, the enemies, and also chastity. By the marriage contract, by the nikah contract, you have uh, placed yourself in the right path and route. Mm. Because otherwise, and according to hadith that says. Uh, you know, uh, the example is brought as if uh, the fruit, uh, if it's ready to be picked from the tree, if that is left on the tree, then the sun and the uh, air would destroy mm-hmm. and ruin that mm-hmm. fruit. Mm-hmm. Likewise, the bicker, those who are, um, you know, young or virgin, in other words, if they're left over without the marriage, then you have to expect mm-hmm. the consequences. Thank you.
Um, thank you very much for joining us for today's show. And several lessons can be learned from the story of Qasim. Um, yes, we know the bravery. Yes, we know the loyalty. And we know his quashing of the desire to grow up, um, to die for his imam. But perhaps, perhaps one of the messages we forget from his story is the importance of the institution of marriage. And several ideas and theories were given today about when is the right time and uh, how to go about this. We'd like to thank you at home for watching and as per usual we'll close with uh, some eulogy about Qasim ibn al-Hassan. So um, just again to give a quick brief, um, this, is, this poem is uh, about a con the conversation that Shah Qasim's mother has with him as he prepares to go f uh, to, uh, to the battlefield inshallah. O oh, Qasim, Qasim, O oh, Qasim, Today is the day that you go and fight. Today is the day that you go to die. You look so handsome standing tall in your armor. I raised you for this one moment and no other. With my prayers I send you to the battlefield. With my prayers I send you to the battlefield. I want you to send salams to your father. He'll take you in his arms and this will last forever. Qasim, Qasim, oh Qasim. Qasim, go and fight like how Abbas taught you. Qasim, your bravery exists only in a few. Qasim, I promise I won't weep upon your death. Qasim, I promise I won't weep upon your death. To call you my shaheed takes me over with pride. But my heart bleeds for your loss deep down inside. Qasim, Qasim, oh Qasim. My soldier, go and ask Hussein to let you go. Your uncle will refuse, but don't give up on your goal. Show him the letter your father had left for you. Show him the letter your father had left for you. My love, go and represent Hassan, your father. His wish can be fulfilled by no other. Qasim, Qasim, oh Qasim. My eyes fill with tears as I see you get on your horse. My heart desires that you stay there and keep on course. But then in front of my own eyes I see my worst nightmare. But then in front of my own eyes I see my worst nightmare. Qasim, you fall and are now helpless on the ground. Qasim, you fall and Qasim, you fall and are now helpless on the ground. The horses trample your body, their hooves in your blood drown. Qasim, Qasim. O oh, Qasim, today is the day that you go and fight. Today is the day that you go to die. Salla ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.
اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وآل محمد